Hey guys, as most of you probably know, I used to work undercover with Project Veritas back in 2018. And I'm gonna share some tips with you on what to look out for to spot an infiltrator. There's seven really great steps, and I should say points to see that you are in fact talking to an undercover journalist, undercover agent, um, someone who's not on your side and wants to make a fool of you. Before I get into that, I wanna say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold. Thank you for sponsoring this Christian conservative who is demonetized and also a dangerous figure on YouTube. So thank you for always supporting the channel. Also Noble Gold has great gold and silver, and it's real currency, real money. So you definitely want to check them out. It's always good to stock up on that. Obviously, you can't eat gold and silver. So be mindful. Make sure you are you obviously have emergency food and be prepared. Just like Joseph was in the Bible, the Lord had him prepare. And then also, you know, take care of people when they came in, in a famine. So you want to make sure you're smart, have emergency food and also gold and silver. Why not? Because it's always going on up. So by the grace of God. Okay, so I want to jump into this. Before I jump into the seven ways to spot an infiltrator, I'm going to really quickly talk about two different ways an investigation can go. One is we call it a long con, meaning that infiltrator, that undercover journalist, that undercover agent is going to have a long time he's going to or she is going to be investigating. So long con is anything over three months. So a three month investigation, six month or a year investigation, maybe even two. So, um, we did those in Project Veritas as well. We had long cons. I had a friend who infiltrated Antifa for over a year. So those exist. Now, uh, a short con is something that is quick. It's a really short investigation. You're basically either going to meet someone, bump into them and try to get information right away. Or maybe you might meet them a few times, two, three times and get some information. Um, and then that's it. That's really like a short con. Obviously, with a long con, you need a, an organization that has a lot more money that can fund that investigation. Not every little tiny small group are able to pay for that. You know, that's hotel, travel, food, and then also daily pay. So who can afford that? Well, our government and some big good organizations such as Project Veritas. So I'm not gonna give away too much there because there's, you know, they're my friends over there. So I'm not gonna give away too many details of Project Veritas. But the reason why I'm sharing these seven tips with you guys is because I have a lot of friends who are running for office, who are in office, whether they're a senator running for governor or, um, or, or even a congressman. So I'd love to give them tips on what to spot when you're encountering someone you have a few questions about. And huh, what are they doing here? Why are they asking so many questions? So this is the seven ways to spot an infiltrator. Number one, they usually come alone. Most of what I found in investigations, a lot of times infiltrators come alone, whether they're undercover journalists or even undercover agents. Sometimes, I mean, the FBI will also send people in twos uh, undercover, but the, the times where I've heard and noticed that they've sent out individuals, they're usually, sometimes they'll send out three undercover FBI and they come in separately to, you know, make contact with the target. That way that other person isn't burned. So there's different ways, but a lot of times infiltrators will come alone. And what you'll notice is that they come out of nowhere. Let's say there's a Republican event and it's a public event. It's a public conservative event. Everyone welcome. Well, guess what? Not everyone that's good has their eyes on that event. So they're going to come into that event. They're going to dress up just like you. And they're going to try to fit in and make contact with someone that is of value, that's of a target in the event. So I'm kind of jumping forward to the other points, but it's important to know that these people come out of nowhere. You, you're asking someone, hey, how do you know them? Do you know them? No, I don't know them. Okay, sure. There might be some great patriots that come that you've never seen before, but infiltrators will come to public events to sting their person of interest. For example, when I worked undercover, Back in 2018, I infiltrated DSA, Democratic Socialist of America. Well, how did I infiltrate them? Because they had a public event posted, which they don't really do anymore because of this investigation where they were fired from the Department of State. But they had a public event and I came in separately from my colleague and we made contact. And we, me and my colleague, we met each other 
at the same meeting. And him and I were both undercover and we both got the goods and the guy was went viral, was all over Fox News. But the point is, we came in separately. And again, sometimes group of two, like we had two people on the investigation, we came in again separately, even though there were two people. Like I said, the FBI can sometimes send in two people at the same time when they're undercover, but usually undercover people come in separately. Tip number two, they try to make contact directly with the main target or the right hand man. Now, the reason why is because it's a bigger story when you actually have that person of interest on video, on audio. So if the target is President Trump, well, they want to come against, pre they want to make contact with President Trump. So here's where you see, if you can't get contact with the specific target, you are going to try to find a friend or a um, campaign manager or someone of influence in that target's life that can introduce you to that person. Or if you don't think you can as an infiltrator or undercover journalist, if you can't make target with the main person, you will then suffice with the second hand man. So like the right hand person or a campaign manager, or let's say the vice president, or let's say, you know, his, his family or circle of influence that are very close to them that have some kind of significant understanding and connection with that person to bring that person down. So infiltrators try to go directly to the target. If not, they'll suffice with someone very important as well. That's on the right hand side of that target. Tip number three, this probably goes without saying the infiltrator will ask a lot of questions. They will flood you with questions, especially if it's a short con and you're just coming in and you're coming in hot. You don't want to come in too hot because it's going to be too obvious, but way to spot an infiltrator is if they ask a lot of questions, like, and I'm not talking about small talk. That's normal. Like, Oh, where are you from? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, where'd you go to school? Okay. They're, they're like, after some time, going to really start hitting you with questions. It was funny because at one of the events I was speaking, you know, at a conference that I was speaking at, there was a very obvious undercover liberal journalist and the mask, of course, was a dead giveaway. But if I didn't see the mask on, she was asking so many questions and instantly my ears perked up and there was like, ding, 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 like red flags. Um, the other red flag, by the way, was that she wanted to talk to me in a quiet area. We met inside of the conference. It was very loud. She said, hey, can we go somewhere quiet? I just have a, you know, just want to chat with you. You, you. you had a great speech. I want to talk to you. So we instantly, that was a red flag, by the way. That's another like extra little bonus tip, how to spot an infiltrator. A lot of times they want to go somewhere quiet because they want to record you on their phone or some kind of recording device. So you want to make sure if someone wants to take you in a quiet place that you understand that they are probably going to record you. So she asked me to step outside. I did. I instantly knew something was up and I wanted to just entertain it for a little bit and see what she, where she's going to go. And so what does she do right away? She started asking me questions. So you know, I, I, I saw you had the speech. Are you friends with this person? Oh, they're so great. They're so great. They're going to start throwing a lot of compliments. That's another thing that's on the list. They throw a lot of compliments to get your trust. So I was entertaining her for some time. And eventually she just kept firing away questions. And one of them she asked me, which is where I like laughed and just turned around was, oh, um, are you, do you believe in Q? Are you a Q follower? Okay, this is I've had enough of this charade. So I just turned around, completely ignored her and just kept walking and actually told the host of the event. Uh, There's an undercover journalist here. I just knew she was on, I just felt it. And uh, she's not a good person. They en ended up kicking her out. So FYI, that's a big tip. Ask a lot of questions. Again, in that point in point three, ask a lot of questions, want to talk quietly with you and give you a lot of compliments so they can gain your trust. And actually this journalist was funny because she said, uh, I really, really loved your speech. You gave such a great speech. Because Since I already had a red flag on her, I said, oh, really? What part of my speech did you love? Um, um, oh, uh, 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 oh, you love my speech. Don't you remember what you loved about it? I'm sure there's a point or two that you really loved. And she's just looking at me and I said, mm-hmm. And so then she fired away her questions. I mean, it was so obvious. And, and, and obviously, if you have this training to be able to spot lies and, and spot 
um, someone trying to conceal something from you, that's a great way. And I'm actually going to go through the end of this video. I'm going to go through a list of books that I recommend if you're interested on this topic and want to know more and want to know how to discern people lying to you, infiltrating and how to spot lies, especially in body language. Tip number four, if they are an amateur, if they are just beginners, this is something you're going to notice if they're going undercover and they're an infiltrator, especially if this infiltrator is using undercover cameras. Now, amateurs that have never done this before and are not well trained, when they're undercover, they're very nervous. They're, they're looking around, they're, they can't make eye contact, they ask you questions with their head down. The other thing that they'll really show is that, especially if they're filming undercover, they'll keep looking at their device. For example, if I'm infiltrating and let's say you are a target of interest and I'm an amateur and I'm recording you on my cell phone, you'll notice if I'm an amateur and don't know what I'm doing, I'm gonna keep looking at my cell phone. And sure, maybe I might be expecting a text or a call, but sometimes I've seen it too before. It's so obvious they're recording me on their cell phone. If it's a professional, it's a lot harder to tell if they're recording. There are some other cues I'm gonna go through, but with amateurs, they'll look at their device. So if they have like a something, a hidden camera on them, they'll keep looking down. I noticed myself actually when I first time I was undercover, I noticed myself doing this. I kept like looking, oh my God, they, they, they know I'm recording. <gasps> and I just kept looking around everywhere and I realized, okay, I need to stop making it so obvious. So that's another tell, that's tip number four. Tip number five, if they are pros, it's gonna be a lot harder to tell because pros, they will blend in with people. Obviously they have a lot of practice. They're not nervous when they talk to people. They're not looking at their devices but they are smart and harder to spot because they will blend in better. They, if it's a conference, for example, let's say it's a conservative conference and they want to talk to the person in charge, they will blend in. What they're going to do is they're going to buy a t-shirt from the event, put it on and blend in with everybody else. So first of all, it'll be hard to find them after you speak to them. And when you meet them, you're thinking, oh, interesting. This one, this person's one of me. For example, when I worked undercover uh, in DSA, Democratic Socialist of America, which again are communists, right? They openly said they were communists. Me, I had nonverbal cues such as a communist pin. I had a Stalin sticker. I had, um, you know, USSR on it as well. I mean, I had subliminal nonverbal cues telling them I had it all over my book bag. You know, I, I was, I was totally, I mean, I didn't have pink hair. That's the only thing that I was missing, but I had the pins that told them non-verbally, I am one of you, you guys can trust me. And so this is something actually really important and something to watch out for, whether it be like a Patriot hat or a MAGA hat. We've seen that all the time with, with the left, when they infiltrated, you know, the MAGA events and they infiltrated on um, January 6th, they dressed up what they dressed up as conservatives. They had the make America great again hat. They had you know, the American flag shirts, they will blend in with their surroundings if they're smart. That's the better way to do it if you're infiltrating. So that's something to look out for just because you're talking to someone and they have the American flag shirt and the MAGA hat does not mean they're on your team. It may very well be an infiltrator. So you want to look at other cues. Like, are they asking a lot of questions? Are they trying to get me to connect them with President Trump? Are they alone? Does anybody know them? By the way, when someone's alone, coming alone to you, I always ask because I've I've had many conservative, you know, events I've been to and, and you know parties afterwards. When I say parties, I mean like just like get together, hang out, like someone's Airbnb. We just chat and get to know each other. There have been people that I'm like, who is this person? And I'll I'll go out of my way where I will ask everybody in that room, do you guys know this person? Uh, no. Okay, I'll come up to them. Hey. I'll be the one asking questions. Hey, so who are you? Where'd you come from? I won't try to make them feel too uncomfortable, but sometimes I, I put a little pressure on because I want to get to the bottom of it. And if there's someone that needs to be kicked out, like I said, I've had a few spottings where I've spotted people and they left the party either on their own or because the host kicked them out. And I'm telling you, there are infiltrators, obviously, as we know, that come into all groups. So it's good to be aware of that. Tip number six infiltrators will try to bump into you at some of your favorite locations, locations that you may be vulnerable, locations that you might not think they're trying to go undercover. 
if it's a really well thought out plan, yes, they will meet you and find out and do some research on where you go to the gym. Where is your favorite Starbucks? Uh, they'll find out where your family might be going to. I mean, this is like deep, deep infiltrator stuff, but it's still something to be aware of. For example, if you're coming um, to investigate, let's say someone that's running for office, it would be too obvious to go to their campaign office. Sometimes there's those investigations where it's a more of a long con. You, you know, you want to volunteer there. You might be working there for three, four months. I mean, volunteering there for three, four months. I mean, I've done that just at so many campaigns. It's, it's a little bit too obvious. There's other ways to go about it, which is, again, bumping into people in places that they never thought that infiltrators would actually go to. So it's something to keep in mind. Again, don't be too trusting with people. You don't know that you even meet at a gym, especially if you're a public figure. I say this to congressmen and senators and governors that are running for office all the time. If someone's trying to take you down, they will take you down. They will try their best, whether it be at your coffee shop that you go to every single day, right? This is another extra bonus tip too. change your daily routine. Don't do the same thing every day. When I was investigating, that was the easiest people to get were the ones that left their house at 5 30 AM, walked the same way, got on the same train, uh, took the same shortcut to their office, then would come home exactly at 445, get on the train at five, go to their house and water their plants at 6 p.m. every single night. So there was so I mean, you could do a lot of different cons like, oh, your car broke down in front of their house or there's so many ways that you can actually infiltrate because it's so easy because this person has a set routine. It is very easy. So make sure again, bonus tip do not have the same routine. Keep it different. So if you have like three coffee shops you like, great, go to them, go to different coffee shops. Um, make sure you're not walking home the same way that you left home. There's just different ways to go about being a little bit more secure, especially if you are in the public eye. This is a big tip. I don't walk home the same way. Just going to say that. Tip number seven, the most important tip that I can give you, which is be aware that not only are infiltrators going to ask a lot of questions, but infiltrators know that people are too trusting. People are way too trusting. How to spot an infiltrator? They talk about 10% of the time. They will let you do all the talking. Meaning when you're an infiltrator, you do obviously want to make contact. You want to talk to someone. You want to make them feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, you're kind of hoping to talk maybe 10, 20% of the time. You want the other person to talk. So again, that comes with asking them questions. First, you know, how, you know, their kids or their family, something that kind of builds some trust, builds some rapport. But then when you get down to nitty gritty questions, you want to talk 10% of the time. You want them to talk about everything. And again, I was trained to become an undercover journalist. That's the biggest thing I noticed is that people talk way too much with strangers. You start asking questions and you'll be surprised because we did this exercise where we did this for our undercover training. We went to a random restaurant and talked to a random person and it was mind boggling to me how much strangers told me about their life story. So the bonus tip is shut your mouth if you don't know this person. If you do not know this person, if you've never vetted this person, you've never seen this person, you never heard of this person, even if someone does introduce you to them, that you have a little bit of rapport. I don't share anything of myself with people that I do not know. And I'm talking about even some people that you may know, right? If I don't personally know them, I keep my mouth shut. And especially when they start asking questions, questions that are not what I call normal questions, a little bit more, I don't know, stockish kind of weird questions, I instantly shut down. It's a big red flag to me. I silence it and I don't answer. I just go, mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. Now, what about you? And they try to bring it back to you. No, no, well, I want to know about you. You came up to me. You might, you know, you my friend introduced you to me. So I want to know about you. I'd love to hear about you. Love to learn about you. Let's talk about you first. And so I'll always turn it back on them and I'll ask them a ton of questions. So I hope that helped. I hope that was something that you can really take away 
of how to spot infiltrators. Now, before I go, I want to again share books that I highly recommend that I read when I was undercover. And honestly, sometimes if I feel led, I'll pick it up and read it again. I mean, they're excellent, excellent, excellent books. So the first one that I highly recommend is called Spy the Lie. Spy the Lie was written by um, an ex-CIA CIA agent and an ex-FBI agent. They show you and they talk about all these undercover cues that will allow you to spy someone lying to you. So this is great. They have a follow-up book with this. It's called Lie Spotting. Also super excellent. Really, really good. So there's Spy the Lie, Lie Spotting. Another one is good. Get the Truth. A lot of these are you know, used to be undercover agents like CN. This is another CIA agent that, that wrote this really great book. Another one by Joe Navarro. Um, what everybody is saying. Really good undercover tips. And you know, there's some other great books like How to Win Friends and Influence People, right? By Dale Carnegie. That's a really, uh, Andrew Carnegie. That's a really good one. Now, this one too is good. Find out anything from anyone, any time. There's some really amazing stories, techniques, and again, ways to spot infiltrators. Again, especially if you're in the public eye, most private people doesn't really, doesn't really, you know, concern them too much. Um, especially if you're a private citizen and even if the government doesn't like you, well, they're spying on you and they got, they're very sophisticated. They can just spy on you through your phone, through your computer, through your security cameras. Like it's not, it's not hard, but if you are a public person, or you're starting to become more outspoken conservatively in your community, in, in let's say the school board or whatnot, and you think journalists might be after you or someone a little bit more amateur than the government, well, these are again ways to spot these infiltrators. Hope this helped. Please leave comments down below, share this video with someone that you think would enjoy this video, and obviously subscribe to the channel. Bye guys.